Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down Tropical Storm Adalia, which is expected to become a major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico over the next 48 hours, posing substantial risks to Florida, including storm surge, high winds, and as well as the potential for extreme flooding. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast, but let's first begin with what's happening right now with Tropical Storm Storm Adalia. As of right now, it's located in the Northern Caribbean Sea. It has not moved much, by the way, over the last 12 to 24 hours. It's been very stationary. However, this thing is starting to ramp up in intensity very, very quickly. As of right now, Adalia has become much healthier over the last 12 to 24 hours. There's been a big explosion in terms of convection, which is thunderstorm activity. There's been a lot of that happening over the last 12 to 24 hours in parts of the Northern Caribbean Sea, and this thing is continuing to ramp up and is moving off to the north very slowly, but it will speed up very quickly over the next 12 to 24 hours, and it will eventually be in the southeast Gulf of Mexico by this afternoon, if not maybe into the evening hours. One other thing I want to point out, we do have Hurricane Franklin. This is a Category 4 hurricane. Look at this thing. It's east of Florida. It's not going to impact Florida in terms of substantial risks. It'll stay well to the east, but look at that eye right now. That is a very defined eye. Unfortunately, that is going to be causing substantial impacts to Bermuda, as that will continue to move to the north and northeast. But let's talk more about Tropical Storm Adalia. Right now, it is not a hurricane, but it will be within the next few hours of this forecast going up. Right now, it's about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It is still a tropical storm. Sustained winds around 65 miles per hour. It's moving to the north at 8 miles per hour, so it is picking up speed. Last night, it was moving east at 3 miles per hour, so it wasn't really moving anywhere to the north. It was just moving east. Now, it's moving to the north at 8 miles per hour. It's going to start to pick up speed over the next several hours, and notice as we go into Tuesday morning, this will be still a hurricane by then. Eventually, as we go into Wednesday morning, the National Hurricane Center believes this will become a major hurricane, which I personally think it it will very well become a Category 3 hurricane upon landfall, or if not well beforehand, as this moves off to the north in a very favorable environment. The warm ocean waters, really little to no wind shear. It's really a really bad environment in this case in terms of us, because there will be a major hurricane coming here to parts of Florida. There are a lot of watches and warnings in effect. We have hurricane warnings up and down the coast from Tampa Bay back through Appalachia. There are also tropical storm watches in effect back over on the east coast of Florida. Storm surge and high winds will be possible there. That could even get upgraded to hurricane warnings warnings possibly down the road if there is some development as this moves over land and in back into the Atlantic Ocean. And there are also tropical storm warnings in effect south of Tampa Bay, so back near areas like Cape Coral and back into southwest Florida. We even have tropical storm warnings on the very far western part of the Florida Keys. And then also back near Apal Appalachia and southeast of uh, Panama City, there are also tropical storm warnings there. Storm surge is a huge impact out of the system. Storm surge forecast right now is 7 to 11 feet from the Osceola River back through parts uh, basically north of the Enclote River. So substantial storm surge is possible there. One thing that people are forgetting about is that this is a supermoon night. That means the tides will be one to two feet higher than normal. So storm surge will also be higher than normal. And that's obviously not a good thing here when we have the peak of high tide. It's really, really concerning at this point in terms of storm surge. So if you are ordered to evacuate, I highly recommend that you do because it is going to be a very dangerous situation on the immediate coastline. Looking back just to the south, six to nine feet of storm surge just north of the Enclote River. Back in Tampa Bay, current forecast is four to seven feet. Again, all this is subject to change depending on where this system tracks. If it goes further to the south and east, like here, for example, it very well might start to shift that storm surge forecast further to the south. If it goes a little bit further off to the north, which again is a total possibility, there are a lot of possibilities here still, then that would obviously increase the storm surge a little bit further to the north. And then back over on the east coast of Florida, notice one to three feet of storm surge from the Flagler and Volusia County line all the way back through the mouth of the St. Mary's River. So we will be watching for some storm surge along the east coast as well as Georgia, and this is subject to change. It will likely increase a little bit back over on the East Coast as we go further into the next couple of days. One other thing I want to point out back down the Florida Keys, notice this, there will be storm surge down there, even though you're not in the cone of uncertainty and you'll be very far away from the eye of this storm. Whenever we have hurricanes making landfall like this, we're at very strong westerly winds, so that'll promote more storm surge even further down to the south. In comparison to areas like Indian Pass, for example, there will be a lot less storm surge. The main reason why is because winds will be coming out of the north, so the waves will actually be kind of going away from land, but since this is so close to very strong winds around this hurricane, there will be storm surge right in this area here, and especially closer, again, to the Osceola River area in the Big Bend of Florida. So very big concern there in terms of storm surge, which is one of the biggest impacts out of hurricanes. In terms of the spaghetti models, we have a lot of spaghetti models here, and they're all very in unison of where this is going to make landfall. It'll basically be between north of Tampa, so near the Osceola River, so that's going to be back over in the Big Bend, back through areas that are near the Anclote River, so that 
that'll be kind of the area there but the key the cedar key area is really where i think personally this will make landfall or at least within about a 35 mile radius of cedar key that's the best chance for landfall out of this hurricane uh, again this is within 48 hours so it'll make landfall going into wednesday morning and after wednesday morning this will start to ride up the coast where this goes from here is a little bit more uncertain but there's a chance it stays a little bit more inland which would promote more of a flooding risk inland and perhaps an isolated tornado risk right along the immediate coastline storm surge also possible and then if it stays just out to sea we'll be talking about storm surge perhaps significant damaging winds along the coastline upwards of 80 miles per hour in addition to this we'll be watching for a significant flooding threat right along the coastline with rainfall totals as high as 6 to 10 inches so obviously not very good news there in terms of our flooding risk and as well as again the storm surge risk that will occur along the coastline Let's talk more about what this will look like over the next 48 hours on the future radar. And we'll begin with tonight. There will be some shower and storm activity in Florida, some of which will be some tropical showers. But overall, a lot of that storm activity will come from sea breeze activity, which is very typical for Florida during this time of the year. Once we go into the overnight hours, more tropical showers and storms will form just off the coast of Florida. We could see a few of these flirt near Tampa and maybe up through the Big Bend. Could pose maybe an isolated tornado risk, but I think that threat stays low overnight. By tomorrow morning, by 9 in the morning, start to notice these outer band starting to develop back near Cape Coral and Sarasota. That is where we'll be watching for an isolated tornado risk through the morning hours, through the afternoon, and through the evening. So we're going to have a tornado risk basically all day, but that threat should remain low overall throughout the day. Once we get closer to lunchtime, again, tropical showers and storms right along the coastline. As we throw, go throughout the afternoon, there will be an outer band shooting towards Daytona Beach and Palm Bay. That'll pose an isolated tornado risk. The greater tornado risk will be out of that second outer band, which will develop probably during the mid to late afternoon. So this is 5 p.m. We'll be watching for storms near Tampa Bay sarasota eventually going to the evening hours notice this is where the center of hurricane adalia will be and as we go throughout the late evening on tuesday this will likely become a strong category two if not a category three by this point more of these bands will start to enter, enter areas like tampa bay and sarasota damaging winds possible and eventually going into the overnight hours this will start to make landfall sometime around six to eight in the morning on wednesday that's a very specific time frame but it's pretty likely it'll make landfall sometime around there give or take about five hours though in that time frame because it could make a little bit landfall sooner or perhaps a little bit later. And then storms will continue throughout Florida during the morning hours. Tornado risk is lower as we go into Wednesday morning for Florida. But there might be an isolated tornado. But one of the bigger concerns will be the high winds that will come out of this. Notice tropical storm force winds will begin as early as Tuesday night right along the west coast of Florida. These values could be higher by this point, by the way, near Tampa. So just kind of keep that in mind. Very well could be about 15 to 20 miles per hour higher than what it's showing. As we go into overnight Wednesday, so about 3 in the morning, winds are getting closer to 60 miles per hour near Tampa. Where this makes landfall, notice these wind gusts being estimated upwards of 120 to 130 miles per hour so that's a possibility out of this wind gusts could get up there uh near Gainesville as we go closer to seven in the morning notice the winds are right there around 50 60 70 miles per hour again it could be higher depending on where you are very well could be upwards of 70 to 80 just off to the west I do think the winds though are a little bit underestimated in this region so they might be again a 10 to 20 miles per hour higher again we'll keep posted if anything changes there Daytona Beach Orlando Palm Bay even Port St. Lucie could still see some tropical storm force winds as well rainfall totals up and down the coast here highest rainfall totals will be where this eye goes so sarasota tampa gainesville likely to see four to five maybe six inches of rain highest rainfall totals will be in the big bend upwards of eight to ten inches remainder of florida going to be right around one to five inches depending on where you are we will likely be going live about hurricane adalia tonight so make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned